while Gundam typically tries to portray events as realistically as possible, this isn't always the case. Especially in the Cosmic Era, people seem to have a knack for surviving situations that should have 100% killed them. So in today's episode of Gundam Lore, we're having a look at the first time this happened in Gundam Seed, the Strike Gundam vs the Aegis, and how we need two whole mangas for this battle and its outcome to make any sense. But first, a quick recap of how the battle went in the anime and why it causes a problem. Athrun sliced open the Strike's cockpit and then transformed the Aegis to grab onto the Strike to blast him at point-blank range. But his suit ran out of juice, so he went for the next best thing, blowing himself up. A second before he blew, we got a view from inside of the Strike's cockpit, confirming that the cockpit was indeed completely sliced open and could have in no way protected Kira from the blast. Then afterwards, when Kigali and friends found the strike, they found the interior of the cockpit completely destroyed. But Kira woke up next to Lacus as if nothing happened, and seemed perfectly fine for someone who just had an 18 meter giant bomb go off in his face. So what happened? Well, during the battle, a member from the Jung Guild, Lo Gyul, happened to stumble upon them. And even from a distance, he could feel the bloodthirstiness of both pilots. He looked on in awe as he was absorbed by the spectacle. But fortunately for him, he realized just in time what Athrun was up to and used his sword to divert the enormous force of the blast. And then everything went quiet, except for the sounds of the storm. Lo crawled out of his astray to go check on the pilots and their machines. And when he saw the rain running down the strike's face, he couldn't help but feel like the machine was crying. He climbed on it and saw that the emergency shutter had closed, protecting the pilot from the blast. He opened the hatch and dragged out an unconscious Kira. And when he removed the helmet, he was shocked that the pilot was just a kid. But according to another account, Kira managed to get out of the strike by himself, barely escaping the explosion that destroyed his cockpit. He then got up and tried to make his way back to the Archangel, remembering the promise he made to Flay. However, almost immediately he saw the Archangel taking off. He desperately tried to chase it, but his bruised body gave out. And personally, I believe that this could have happened at the same time that Lo was making his way out of his own mobile suit, and then instead of helping him out of the cockpit, he found Kira unconscious on the ground. He then picked him up and had one final look at the Strike Gundam. It had done a great job protecting its pilot, and now it could get a well-deserved rest. It wasn't easy, but Lo managed to carry Kira to Reverend Malkio, a blind priest who was much more than meets the eye. Lo told him what happened and asked him to save Kira. Malkio began treating him, and it was at this point that he found Kira's dog tag and figured out his name. Kira Yamato, a friend of Lacus. Believing this to be fate, he immediately arranged for the unconscious Kira to be transported to space and to Lacus. And then everything happened as we know it did in the anime. And there we go, the amazing tale of how Kira cheated death the first time, explained by combining two separate mangas, Gundam Seed Astray and Gundam Seed the manga. One of them is a great side story with cool characters and good art that perfectly expands upon the already established Gundam Seed universe, and the other one is Gundam Seed the manga. The story of this manga is, unsurprisingly, a simple retelling of Gundam Seed with a few minor changes or additions here and there. And to the author's credit, I do prefer some of them over the anime. But the real big problem with this manga is the art. While some parts are really nicely drawn, on average, the art isn't anything special. Even the cover art is unimpressive, and especially this one makes me feel like I'm about to open up a BL doujin rather than an official Gundam Seed manga. But what really pisses me off the most is that this thing got translated into French and English, but Astray wasn't. Anyways, that's all for this episode of Gundam Lore. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more similar content in the future. Also, if you want to see more alternate universe Gundam lore, let me know in the comments down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, and I hope all of you watching have a great day. 
I will see you all next time.